Hello friends. In this tutorial we learn to create a cinder block collision with the help of Quixel objects and Blender. This tutorial on YouTube is limited only to the simulation setup. To see how you can set up materials, lights and camera, you can check the full version on my Patreon and have access to the Blender file. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to many cool tutorials that are limited to my Patreon and also, you can have access to the full version of tutorials We start by adding cinder blocks from Quixel Bridge. Make sure you have installed the Quixel add-on and also, set the export option to Blender. I have downloaded three different cinder blocks and export them to use these blocks inside Blender. We create a new project in Blender and then, remove the default cube. I'm not really sure why they use a cube as the default object. We scale down the bigger block as I want this block be as big as the others. We put the all cinder blocks inside a collection. We rename this collection to blocks and then hide the collection as we don't need it for now. What we are after now is geometry nodes. Blender array modifier is not useful for collection nor you can randomize the rotation or position of the instances. We add a cube and assign it a new geometry node. We want to use the volume of our cube as the source to distribute points inside it. We add a mesh to volume node. Now we need to add another node to distribute the points inside the volume we have created earlier. As you can see we have some points inside our geometry. Now it's time to distribute our cinder blocks in the volume of this cube. We add a new node, Instances on Points. We drag and drop our collection inside geometry nodes. You need to enable the separate children and also, Reset children. Inside the instances on points node make you you have enabled pick instance. Since the size of the cinder blocks are so big, we need to reduce the scale of the instances. Before we dive into how to randomize the position of our instances, we need to do something. We don't want the blocks have a random position. Actually we want they make a grid. To do so, select the distribute points in volume and set its type to grid. We have to play with the spacing value to improve our grid. I set it to 0.5. Finally we want to randomize the rotation of our instances but before do so, 
we need to add a random value node and plug it into instance index. We have to crank up the values inside the random value node. Also, we might need to change seed value to improve the randomness of our blocks. Now we want to rotate the instances randomly. We have a node for it in geometry nodes. We can use the random value node we have added earlier or use a new one to affect the randomness of the instance's rotation. Finally we have to add a Realize Instances node. We want to separate the instances later to add the Rigid Body modifier to them. Also we have to create a fake user for this Geometry node. So in future and also, when we apply the Geometry node, we can still have access to this Geometry node we have created. The first part is done. Now we want to set up our simulation. We apply the geometry nodes and then we separate the blocks in edit mode. We go to edit mode, separate, lose parts. It gives us more than 100 cinder blocks. Before we dive into how add a rigid body modifier, we need to remove the block in the middle as it causes glitches later in the simulation. We want to put our attractor or force in the middle of the scene and it shouldn't be any object there. Now, we need to add the rigid body modifier to each block. We select all of these blocks and from the object tab, rigid body, active, we assign a rigid body modifier to all blocks at once. Let's see how the animation works. The all objects fall but there is a tricky part which you must know, otherwise the simulation won't work as you want. We add a sphere in the middle of our scene. This sphere is going to work as an attractor or force to attract the cinder blocks. We assign two modifiers to the sphere. One is the rigid body passive and set its type to sphere. The other modifier is the force field. We have to use a negative value for the force amount. By doing this, force field will attract the cinder blocks. Aside from that, you need to increase the noise amount to 1. As you can see, the animation is not working. Instead of attracting the cinder blocks, the instances fall down. The reason this happens is the weight of the objects. When we use a rigid body modifier, we have a value which is called mass. We need to decrease the mass amount to a lower value. We set it to 0.3 for one block and then select all blocks and copy and paste the rigid body changes to the rest. Now the second issue appears. As you can see the force field is not working. Aside from that the blocks are not falling down anymore. The reason of this weird behavior is the origin position. The origin for all blocks is in the middle of the scene. We have to change the origin position. Let's play the animation once more. It works. 
Well done. We need to tweak and more forces to improve the behavior of the blocks when they get attached to the sphere. Let's organize our scene elements and then, we add two more forces. By the way, the YouTube version of this tutorial only focuses on how to set up the animation, but if you follow me on Patreon, you will get access to the Blender file and a complete tutorial to set up the lights materials and camera. The tip you must keep in mind, for rigid body that we used for the blocks. The shape of the rigid body must be set to convex hull. Why? It's very simple, if you use mesh, the simulation would be very slow. So keep the convex hull and make sure you don't change it. We have a new issue. The collision distance of the blocks is not correct and the blocks collide with each other. We need to enable the collision margin for the rigid body modifier. We set the collision margin for one block and assign these attributes to other elements. Let's play the animation once more and find a perfect frame for our final render. The collision margin is not correct, we need to lower the value. We add two more forces. One is the turbulence force to add more randomness to the block's movement and the other one is vortex force to let the blocks rotate before they get attracted to the sphere. The last step is changing how the force field attracts the blocks. We select the sphere and then force field settings. We set a radius for the force field. So, the power of the attractor reduces gradually. Also the power amount will define how quickly the force power gets reduces. Let's play the animation and find a perfect frame to render. This frame looks good to me to be rendered. The tutorial on YouTube is limited only to the simulation setup. For learning how you can set up the materials, lights and camera, you can follow me on Patreon and also get access to the Blender file.